Uh, my name is Konstantin Omansky. I'm a colon and rectal surgeon at the University of Chicago. This is a case of an 85-year-old gentleman who on colonoscopy was found to have hepatic flexure cancer. His metastatic workup revealed no evidence of metastatic disease. His past surgical history included cholecystectomy via Cochrane incision and an appendectomy via McBurney incision. He was found to be a candidate for a laparoscopically assisted right hemicolectomy. We're starting with an upper midline incision and extending it down towards the base of the umbilicus. The base of the umbilicus is grasped, incised, and we enter the peritoneal cavity under direct visualization. We use a 12 millimeter balloon tip port and 10 millimeter 30 degree scope. The initial exploration of the abdomen reveals adhesions of the colon to the anterior abdominal wall, which is to be expected with patient having a history of previous open cholecystectomy and open appendectomy, but it's not precluding us from proceeding with a laparoscopic approach. Two 5 millimeter ports are placed in the left lower and the left upper quadrants, approximately 8 centimeters apart and also 8 centimeters from umbilical port. This creates a most favorable ergonomic positioning for the surgeon. The third right lower quadrant port also is placed approximately 8 centimeters from the umbilical port and is used for retraction of the cecum as well as to obtain exposure. The next step is to identify the iliocolic pedicle in order to perform a high ligation. The anatomy is slightly distorted, but we are able to identify the cecum and iliocolic pedicle is uh, identified. The area cephalod to it is where the duodenum is expected to be. We <clears throat> start medial to lateral dissection by opening the peritoneum and identify the duodenum located cephalod. Blunt dissection is carried out in a medial to lateral fashion, extending it both laterally, slightly cephalod, and caudad. We now take the iliocolic pedicle using a bipolar energy device, performing a high ligation while keeping the duodenum in clear view. Once the complete division performed, we identify a plane that should be located anterior to the duodenum where uh, all retroperitoneal plane is preserved. And now we getting into somewhat more superficial plane that we will continue both laterally and caudad. The dissection performed uh, either with uh, a suction tip or blunt uh, instrument. as we're advancing our dissection laterally. So now we're at the lateral of the lateral abdominal wall as indicated by the suction tip and we're confirming it by looking over the colon. Again, you can see the duodenum located within the retroperitoneum is intact. Now we mobilize the small bowel out of the pelvis and turn our attention to cecum and its attachments. Uh, this is also done with the use of bipolar energy device. Ureter is identified. And even though we're not intending on working deep in the retroperitoneal plane, identification of ureter prevents inadvertent injury terminal ileal attachments are taken down and lateral attachments of the colon are taken down along the white line of told. Additional mobilization of the terminal ileum is performed to achieve the length. And now we are seeing the previous plane of dissection as indicated here, which we will join from lateral to medial plane of dissection. Constant lateral traction helps to expose the plane of dissection. Additional division of uh, terminal ileal attachments is performed while taking care to avoid getting deep into retroperitoneum to avoid injury to the ureter. 
Again, this is our plane of dissection. And now we're joining the previous plane of dissection that we started from the medial lateral. And just with the quick cuts of the bipolar energy device, these planes are now joined. At this point, the patient is rotated and placed in um, reversed in dharmic position to allow the viscera to retract more caudally. Some of the attachments of the uh, colon are taken down, which are not very dense, and colon is brought down. So this is the transverse colon, and the uh, uh, hepatocolic ligament is being identified. Because of the previous cholecystectomy, the hepatocolic ligament is somewhat distorted in this area, uh, densely adherent to the inferior surface of the liver. Therefore, meticulous dissection can be performed at this point to avoid injury to the liver or colon. And once the hepatocolic ligament is divided, we're joining the previous plane of dissection that was started from lateral aspect of the colon. At this uh, segment, we have to be careful to avoid injury to the duodenum that's located posterior to that and also to the biliary tree. It is preferred to um, perform the hepatic flexure takedown by approaching it from both ascending colon distally and from transverse colon proximally. The colon now is fully mobilized, and you can see the uh, tattoo marked cancer uh, within the hepatic flexure. The duodenum within the retroperitoneum is preserved, and it's peristalsing. The gerotus fascia is intact. The liver and its undersurface is intact. We're now extending the incision to perform extraction of the specimen, resection, and anastomosis. Because of the size of the tumor, uh, the size of our incision is slightly larger than we typically perform because the tumor appears to be bulky. The point of transection on the terminal ileum is chosen, approximately 5 centimeters proximal to the ileocecal valve, and the bowel is transected with a linear GIA stapler. We mark the proximal end with a silk suture, so it helps us to identify it and deliver it into the operative field later in the operation. Again, using bipolar energy device, we partially transect the mesentery and connect it to the previous plane of dissection. The terminal ileum is returned into the operative field and we deliver the colon by extracting it with the amentum. We chose the point of transection on the transverse colon. The amentum is divided towards the colon, again using bipolar energy device. The window in the mesocolon was made, and the colon is transected in a similar fashion with a GIA stapler. It is preferable to place a staple line in such a way that the corner is located at the tinea libera, where anastomosis could be constructed. And the mesocolon is now divided with bipolar energy device. This is a critical step of the operation where uh, branches of the middle colic artery is divided. Uh, we're dividing the right branch of the middle colic artery. And it is very important to perform a high ligation to achieve an excellent nod nodal harvest and also to avoid injury to the duodenum, which could be seen and indicated with forceps. So this is just a remaining segment of uh, uh, mesocolon that is divided and ligated with bipolar energy device. So the specimen is uh, 
completely extracted, we evaluate the margins and also palpate the cancer. Anastomosis is to be constructed in a side-to-side -side functional end-to-end -end fashion. Our first step is to uh, clear a segment of the um, mesenteric border of the bowel in preparation for the anastomosis both on the colonic side and on the ileal side. This is done with the use of bovi electrocautery. Once the ends of the bowel are prepared, we're ready to set up the anastomosis. We take a special care to maintain the orientation of the transected ilium to avoid uh, the twist. The corners of the staple lines are excised and we place stapler in each of the limbs in this small bowel and the colon. And as I mentioned, we try to fire the staple line through the tinea libera. The staple is now connected. Closed and fired. We prefer to excise the entire staple line from both small bowel and colon using TA stapler and that is why we clear some of the mesentery of the bowel so that we can accomplish this more easily. By excising the staple lines completely, we're replacing the previous staple lines with one clean transfer staple line across the entire anastomosis. We oversaw the corners of the anastomosis with the Lambert uh, sutures on both the colonic and the small bowel side. And also, we oversaw the confluence of the staple lines at the top of the anastomosis, where essentially three staple lines meet, creating a potentially weak spot in the anastomosis. This is done in the modified horizontal mattress fashion, coming across the staple lines and over the transfer staple line in return fashion. Once it's tied, it inverts the confluence of the staple line. Finally, we place uh, a Lambert stitch at the heel of the anastomosis. The anastomosis is now returned into the abdominal cavity. Abdomen is irrigated, and we close the fascia, use a simple, interrupted, absorbable, braised, braided suture. In this particular case, we're using zero vicro. The total length of incision is seven and a half centimeters, partly because of the size of the specimen that we needed to accommodate. The incision is closed using <clears throat> subcuticular staples and sutures. Postoperative course of this patient was unremarkable. He was discharged in postoperative day number five. His final pathology revealed T3 and zero adenocarcinoma with 17 lymph nodes negative for metastatic disease. The patient elected not to undergo chemotherapy and presently he's doing well.